Let us pray. Brothers and sisters, in this Christmas season, we prepare ourselves to hear again the message of the angels of the babe lying in a manger. Let us hear and heed in Holy Scripture the story of God's loving purpose for us and make this place glad with our carols of praise. Let us pray for peace and justice on earth, for love and unity in the church, and for goodwill among all peoples. Let us remember in his name the poor and the helpless, the abused, the hungry and the oppressed, the sick and those who mourn, the lonely and unloved, the young and the old. Finally, let us remember before God his mother Mary, whose hope was in the word made flesh, and with whom in Jesus we are one forevermore. We offer these prayers as we adore our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The reading from the Word of God, written in St. Luke, chapter 1, beginning at verse 26. St. Luke 1, 26 to 35. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever. And of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. 
the word of the Lord. In keeping with copyright laws, I wish to acknowledge the composers and arrangers of the pieces we will be presenting. This evening, the St. George's Cathedral Choir will render the following pieces. The Angel Gabriel, written by Baron Gold with Descant by Annette Minich. We Three Kings, written by John Hopkins, adapted and arranged by Russell Robinson. The First Noel Pachibel's Canon, arranged by Michael Clausen. Good News, Everybody Listen. Words by Paul Williams, music by Michael Barrett. Calypso Carol, words and music by Perry, arranged by S.K. Coates. And Never a Baby Like Jesus, words and music by Noel Dexter. I hope you enjoy this evening's presentation by the St. George's Cathedral Choir. We'll begin now with the Angel Gabriel. <coughs> Thank you. 
reading from the Word of God, written in Isaiah chapter 62, beginning at verse 6. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels, sentinels all day and all night. They shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people, build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, lift up an ensign over the peoples. The Lord has proclaimed to the end of the earth. Say to your daughter Zion, See, your salvation comes. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. They shall be called the holy people, the redeemed of the Lord. And you shall be called Sought out a city not forsaken. The word of the Lord.
Samuel Toka, accompanied by Donata Mary Lino. Now have the choir, the first Noel.
reading from the word of God written in Titus chapter 3 beginning at verse 4 Titus chapter 3 verse 4 to 7 but when the goodness and loving kindness of God our Savior appeared he saved us not because of any works of righteousness that we had done but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit this spirit he poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that, having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. Jesus, my Lord, never a baby like 
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke, the second chapter, beginning at the first verse. days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. This is the Gospel of Christ. He informs us 
In those days, the decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration on a state where Tyrrhenus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. A decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This emphasizes the authority power of Emperor Augustus. For all in his vast empire had to obey, including the Hindu people who were under Roman domination. So Joseph and Mary made their journey to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. Think of Mary carrying the Son of God, the Christ child in her womb, having to adhere to the decree of Emperor Augustus. Think of the crowds of people journeying along to be registered and Joseph and Mary being among them and what an experience this would have been for a woman who was expecting a child. Further, when Joseph and Mary got to Bethlehem, there was no place for them in the end. One may ask, if Joseph was from the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David, why is it that there was no room for Joseph and Mary in Joseph's hometown? Why is it that a relative, a family member, could not take them in? For in those days, hospitality was highly valued and the family was held in high esteem and played a major role in the life of the nation as a whole. Why is it that Mary had to give birth to her firstborn son and wrap him in bands of cloth and lay him in a manger? In this gospel passage, Luke informs us that the birth of Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world is not other than a divine mystery. God carrying out God's purpose in and through the exigencies, the demands, the anxieties and circumstances of human history. Here, Emperor Augustus it portrayed as the one with authority, might, and power, and control. And baby Jesus lived there in the manger, innocent, and not being able to help himself, depicted as being powerless, and perhaps a victim of circumstance. Yet, he is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. As we reflect on this gospel passage according to Luke, we observe that there is a similarity 
between the birth of Jesus and his crucifixion, death and burial. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and they made false accusations against him. And eventually, Pontius Pilate sentenced him to crucifixion. He was whipped, spat upon, ridiculed, treated like a common criminal, nailed to the cross, suffered and died. As at his birth, Jesus, the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, is portrayed as powerless and perhaps a victim of circumstance. Yet, he is the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. A divine mystery. God fulfilling God's will in and through the exigencies, demands, anxieties, and circumstances of human history. In presenting to us the story of the birth of the Christ child in this way, in the gospel that bears his name, Luke presents to us the attributes of God, whose power and authority, unlike that of Emperor Augustus, and the ways in which authority is perceived and exercised in this world, God exercises his authority, his power with love, mercy, understanding, and compassion. And it is geared towards the well-being and building of people, communities, and nations. A God who is willing to and who shares in all the experiences, conditions, and situations of life of us human beings. Luke also informs us that it is the shepherds watching their flock by night that the wonderful news of the birth of Christ of the Christ child was announced. And they were among the first to see the newborn babe lying in a manger. Why shepherds? For shepherds at that time had a bad reputation as thieves and were among the poor. And as Joachim Jeremiah has shown, they were classed with tax collectors and prostitutes and members of despised trades. This emphasizes and is meant to show us that it is into our insecure and troubled lives that Jesus comes again and again. This year, in the midst of the coronavirus pandemic and its impact on the social, economic, educational, spiritual, psychological, emotional health of our nation and beyond, with all the other challenges and issues we encounter in our lives, we celebrate the birth of the Christ child, who came to us on that first Christmas born, born in a manger, as the hymn writer puts it, born in a lowly cattle shed. We celebrate the divine mystery of God who comes to us and works his will and purposes out in and through the exigencies, demands, anxieties, circumstances of human history. Like the Blessed Virgin Mary, think of pregnant women who have to struggle to meet and fulfill the demands of life. Think of pregnant women who have to struggle to fulfill the requirements of the law. Think of pregnant women who are not welcomed by the expecting father. Think of pregnant women, especially the young, who are not welcomed by their parents and close relatives. 
Like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, think of those who are born in unfortunate circumstances. Think of those who have become unemployed due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Think of those who due to the impact of COVID-19 and the other challenges and demands of life experience a sense of powerlessness, <coughs> helplessness, hopelessness, and loss. My brothers and sisters in Christ, the birth of the Christ child brings us a message of hope. It reminds us that God is working his purpose out and carrying out his will in and through the exigencies, demands, anxieties, and circumstances of our lives. It presents to us a divine mystery through which the depth and power of God's love and graciousness is revealed and made known. In spite of the decree of Emperor Augustus, which caused Joseph and Mary to travel to Bethlehem at a time when Mary was expected to give birth. In spite of their being no place for them in the inn, in a context where Joseph and Mary seemed so powerless and helpless as they had no control over what was happening around them. Yet, yet, the will and purpose of God was fulfilled. Mary gave birth to the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world, in a manger. In spite of the coronavirus pandemic, in spite of all the other challenges and issues that have come to in our lives, Christmas reminds us that God comes to us, that God is with us and is fulfilling His will and carrying out His purposes in and through all the exigencies, demands, anxieties and circumstances of our lives. Therefore, on those occasions when the demands of Emperor Augustus, when the demands of the things of this world, when the demands of COVID-19 pandemic and all the other circumstances around us seem to have all power and control, we are reminded that although Mary had to follow the decree of Emperor Augustus, at a time when she was expecting a child, although there was no place for them in the inn, Mary gave birth to the Son of God, the Messiah, the Savior of the world. Luke, the Gospel writer, presents to us the divine mystery of the birth of the Christ child. He presents it to us as good news. As he says, in that region, there were shepherds living in the field, keeping one over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. For see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly, there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts. Praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those who he favors. My brothers and sisters in Christ, 
the birth of the Christ child brings us a message of hope. It reminds us that God is working his purpose out and carrying out his will in and through the exigencies, demands, anxieties, and circumstances of our lives. It presents to us a divine mystery through which the death and power of God's love and graciousness is revealed and made known. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those who be favored. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
intercession, form C, beginning on page 108. With all our heart and all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace and welfare of the world, for the witness and work of the church, and for the unity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our bishops and all ministers of God's word and sacraments, that they may be filled with truth and love and be found without fault at the Lord's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the leaders of the nations and for those in authority among us, that they may serve justice and promote the freedom and dignity of all peoples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression, and for all who labor in the cause of human liberation and fulfillment, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the sick, the suffering, the sorrowful, and the dying, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for deliverance from the ravages of hurricane, earthquake, drought, or flood, and for a just and proper use of God's creation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for ourselves, and all who confess the name of Christ, that we may show forth the excellencies of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord our God, the fervent prayers of your people in the multitude of your mercy, look with compassion on us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O Lord of love, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Lord is justice, peace, and joy, inspired by the Holy Spirit. The peace of the Lord be always with you. At this time, I read for you the Bishop's Message, Bishop's Christmas Message 2020. The Blessed Virgin Mary, give birth to baby Jesus in a lowly cattle shed. It was at a time when the Hebrew people were facing several challenges in their land. They were under Roman domination and the economic and social, social and political and health conditions were deteriorating and they were eagerly looking forward to better day. It was into a world filled with joy and sorrow, happiness, pain and suffering, good and evil, uprightness and sin, harmony, division and hatred, and all the other vicissitudes of life, that the angel came to Mary. Greeting, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now, your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. Luke chapter 1, verse 28 to 38. And we read in John chapter 1, verse 1 to 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through Him, and without Him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. I take this opportunity on behalf of my wife Lois and three daughters, Marcella, Michaela, and Malaika, to wish you a blessed and happy Christmas and a healthy and peaceful New Year. Your friend and bishop, the Right Reverend C. Leopold Friday, Bishop of the Winnard Islands.
going to be. Father, Lord, you be here to have given us. Drink this, all of you, 
So this is my blood of the new covenant to shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me.
Number 91. While shepherds watch their flocks by night.
607, 607, Lord enthroned in heavenly splendor.
248, the third voice of union prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever living God, we thank you for feeding us the spiritual food, the most precious body and blood of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ. Showing us in these holy mysteries that we are living members of the body of your Son and heirs of your eternal kingdom. And now, Father, send us out to do the work you have given us to do. To love and serve you as faithful witnesses of Christ our Lord. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit, the honor and glory, now and forever. By his incarnation gathered into one, all the earthly and heavenly, fill you with his joy and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Very brief tonight. Oh, morning. Yeah. Merry Christmas to you all. All of the groups and organizations within the church have sent in greetings for the congregation. I will read one of them that captures the sense of all the others. Greetings are extended to all our brothers and sisters in Christ. As we move forward into a new year, let us thank God for the many blessings he has bestowed on us to cope with the trials and challenges of 2020. In 2021, may we continue to serve Christ selflessly Promote the good news to everyone, and above all, show love to our neighbors. Let the peace of Christ reign in our hearts as we experience God's unconditional love. And may we strive to transcend His goodness to our fellow man. This is one of the greetings, but it captures the essence of all the others from the Mother's Union, Communicant Association, Prayer Group, Altar Servers, Men's Fellowship, the Anglican Church Women's Association, and the Youth Group. They all join to greet you and to wish you all a Happy New Year. I'd like to give God thanks for you taking the time out to be in his house and to praise him this night. The young man on the drums, several months ago, he suggested to me that he wants to convert to Anglicanism from a Pentecostal background. A work in progress. A work in progress. But he will be a worthy addition to our worshiping community, community here. And so with that, I think we're gonna go home and get, have some ham and turkey and, <laughs> and other stuff. So we're gonna sing Joy to the World.
Lord be with you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Merry Christmas, everybody. And we must say thanks to Digicel for providing the service so this broadcast could have been seen by you. So once more thanks to Digicel, we are going offline now.